all had a plan. This lady is eating. I felt so bad. People take that and run with the wind. Does that make it okay? Sit Sit with that. It's getting weird. Hey guys, it's your girl Cameron and I'm back at it again with another video. And today we are going to be talking about something that really, 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 really needs to be openly discussed. I want everybody to pull up a chair. We're music lovers. We all have our favorite artists. So I really want to talk to each and every one of you today because this is serious. When fans take things too far, when parasocial relationships develop and go too far. We know about fandoms. We know about stands, obsessive fans, the casual listener, which many of us fall into that box, but we need to have a conversation because we, my friends, need to do better. What happens when a star, a singer, a musician reaches stardom seemingly overnight, right? Well, in Hollywood, there has been an initiation process that artists must go through, things that come with the job. Stalking, harassment, millions of fans take it or leave it. That's what they say. That is what you signed up for. And parasocial relationships develop between fans and the artist, celebrities in general, but mainly we're going to be focusing on musicians today. What happens when as an artist, you have boundaries, but what are you met with? Fans calling you entitled. Us buying your music is funding your life. So consider yourself lucky that we want to chase you down the street, stalk and harass you and ridicule every little thing about you. Sounds like fun, right? But does that sound fair to you? So today we are going to discuss parasocial relationships and beyond the parasocial relationship, the entitlement that fans feel to their favorite artists. Yes, entitlement. And maybe the entitlement that celebrities feel back, right? It's a two-way situation. It's a two-way street. And yeah, back in the day, let's be real, in the 2000s, it was normal for pop stars to be bombarded by paparazzi, even calling the paparazzi on themselves. They still do that being posted on Perez Hilton's blog site, your face all over TMZ, and being overworked where you have to dedicate yourself to upholding a near perfect image to your millions of fans. Not followers yet, but fans. With the nature of social, social media, celebrities are overexposed to harsh online comments, to fans having constant accessibility, and you as a singer having to balance the two to remain relevant. You kind of have to play the game, which puts you in slippery waters because you have those fans who take things a step further. But what happens when fans turn on you because you simply have have boundaries and you express them publicly. Maybe not palatably, but publicly. Recently, Chapel Roan went on a rant to address the crazy fans and that she has boundaries. And it wasn't really well received with people calling her entitled, whether it was the tone, whatnot. We will dive into it today. We're not only going to touch on that, but we are going to take everything a step further. We are going to dive into this world of fan entitlement, celebrity entitlement, parasocial relationships, and the detriment that poses a threat to all of us. Should pop stars and singers have to sacrifice their humanity, privacy, and dignity just for living out loud, being known, and doing what they love? Or should we be challenging and questioning the status quo? I think as a celebrity, as a singer, especially as a pop star, hate to break it to you, but there are some things that do come with it, and sometimes you have to bow out. And I would argue that some people feel like we need to change things so people shouldn't have to bow out of of sharing their gifts with the world. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button down below. We are very, very close to 70,000 subscribers. And also check out my Patreon down below. The link is in my bio. Um, I do my album audit series where I react to in full length album releases. Thank you guys so much for watching today. And let's just get straight into the commentary. So we're going to frame this video based on Chapo Roan's recent rant. But most importantly, first, her rise to fame, because I think this adds context to the conversation. So Chapo Roan is a 26-year-old pop star on the rise. Her music has been deemed vibrant and refreshing with her 80s synth pop inspired music. And she brings a camp style to the pop scene, which has been a missing void in pop. People have gravitated to her the more that they've discovered her music. In 2014, she had uploaded an original song to YouTube and got signed to Atlantic Records. Um, And she actually wrote the song while attending summer camp at Interlochen Center for the Arts. Midwestern Girls Up 
10. That's a popular arts camp here in Michigan. And in 2017, Chapel did release her debut EP, School Nights, and her 2020 single, Pink Pony Club. Despite the song being fairly successful, definitely gave her a boost. Um, she was unfortunately dropped from her label, Atlantic Records. And although she did gain some steam around this time, she had moved to LA, she was opening for some artists and performing, while also working as a production assistant, a barista, and a nanny to support herself. She was a queer woman navigating her identity in this world we call Hollywood and trying to make her dreams come true, essentially. And then boom, 2023, the rise and fall of a Midwest princess, her debut album, release. And although this stretch in her career didn't get this initial large mainstream push, right? There wasn't this main buzz. Chapel definitely developed some sort of cult-like following. And when I say that, I mean, from a musical standpoint, people were very invested in her music. Through word of mouth, her music spread. She ended up opening for Olivia Rodrigo on her Guts tour. And within the first week of tour, her streams rose 32%, y'all. And performances at festivals like Coachella and the Governor's Ball, with her streams increasing by 500% between February and April. And I don't know if you guys remember, I did my Pop is Dead video. I didn't know who she was. And a lot of you guys were like, check out this girl, check Chapel Roan out, check Chapel Roan out. Y'all need to check her out. And I was like, I've never heard of this girl. And now, She's the only person you can ever hear about. In my circles, what I see on social media, consistently people are talking about her. So that goes to show that she had a huge boost, um, honestly astronomical boost. So let's put into perspective, that's a lot to go through within a short period of time. And as recent as June, 2024, the rise and fall of a Midwest princess entered the top 10 on the Billboard 200 guys, an album that was released in 2023. So you can see how unsettling or frustrating it could be for someone to experience the dark sides of fame so quickly. And actually some months ago at a concert, she was clearly feeling overwhelmed and she opened up to her audience about her fast paced growth. I just feel a little off today because I think that my career is just kind of going um, really fast and it's really hard to keep up. And so I just, I'm just being honest that it's, I'm just having a hard time today. This is all I've ever wanted. It's just so, it's just heavy so thank you. I just wanted to share that I'm very fortunate and grateful to have my dream job. This job is very difficult for me to process and maintain a healthy life and mindset. I already have difficulty regulating my emotions because I have bipolar 2 disorder. Everything is very exciting right now. And I'm realizing that success actually makes me quite uncomfortable. And a lot of people didn't like that. A lot of people were like, she is not built for the pop star life. Girl, suck it up. Wipe those tears. This is what it is. So there was already discourse brewing around Chapel. She's outspoken. She's not clean cut. She's not super media trained. Silly girl on TikTok who's honest, who says crazy things. Her music's blowing up and she's raw and she's honest about it. And pop stars were not always embraced to have that. If anything, if you were to show a slight vulnerability, we can look at a couple figures. You were ostracized, ridiculed, and looked at like the second coming spawn of Satan. Literally, like these girls cannot catch a break. When Chaborone posted a video of her ranting and not being cute with her choice of words. Like she was not trying to put a bow on it, make it cute, nothing. People had very divided reactions. If you saw a random woman on the street, would you yell at her from the car window? Would you harass her in public? Would you go up to a random lady and say, can I get a photo with you? And she's like, no, what the fuck? And then you get mad at this random lady? Um, would you be offended if she says no to your time because she has her own time? Would you, would you stalk her family? Would you follow her around? Would you try to dissect her life and bully her online? This is a lady you don't know. Um, and she doesn't know you at all. I'm a random bitch. You're a random bitch. Just think about that for a second. I don't care that abuse and harassment, stalking, whatever, is a normal thing to do to people who are um, famous or a little famous, whatever. I don't care that it's normal. I don't care that this crazy type of behavior comes along with the job, the career field I've chosen. You're supposed to be entitled to whenever you see a celebrity. I don't give a f if you think it's selfish of me to say no for a photo or for your time or to for a hug. That's not normal. That's weird. It's weird how people think that you know a person just because you see them online or you listen to the art they make. That's weird. So because this sparked a huge conversation and even a debate about the social ills of fan behavior, 
right? How fans feel entitled to their favorite celebrity. And she's not even just talking about stalking or like the extreme iterations. She was even saying like taking a picture. Like if I'm out and I'm chilling, don't ask me. I can I don't give a damn. And those are things that do kind of come with the territory. So there was a split, there was a divide. And unfortunately, this is a story that many public figures know all too well. It's not just a unique experience to her, but does that make it okay? Sit so with that. that. Y'all, we're going to have to have a little therapy session because this this video is going to kind of take it home. That's where at its simplest form, she's 100% correct. She's not saying nothing wrong, right? But let's be very real. Two things can exist at once, right? Two truths. When you are widely known for making music or making art or being public, there is a level of fandomonium that exists. It's risky business and you are sacrificing aspects of your privacy. But the other side is that does not mean that it should be normal right we've normalized it in a way where it's like people are making art in their bedroom these days posting it on the internet we know that there's a a, a potential to go viral or a potential to be seen but sometimes you kind of think it's never going to be me because there's so many fish in the sea now it's even more one in a million so some people do legit make their art and go and if y'all like it if y'all rock with it you rock with it and if you don't you don't but the extra stipulations that celebrities and musicians specifically are asked to put up with, it's not fair. It's not. But there were people who, when she was like, I don't need to take a picture with you. I don't need a hug. I'm not doing none of that if I don't want to. People were arguing the semantics. We're saying things like, girl, asking for a picture is not harassment. People saying that she's not meant to be famous. New Coke rant unlocked. <laughs> Or OMFG, girl, give it a rest. You are not Beyonce. But the gag is, when y'all bring Beyonce into conversations like this, you guys abused, used, and did everything. Dragged Beyonce through the mud. Her life, her family. Like, honestly, when y'all were talking about her child, I'm surprised she talks to anybody. I would have been all bets are off. So y'all dragged her so much throughout the 20 plus years of her career that she doesn't even speak to us anymore. It's okay to have public boundaries with fans and human to human it absolutely is it is ding 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 but then also in her response video she made another video kind of explaining herself i want people to feel safe at my shows and feel like a community i want to feel that way too i love you and love is not transactional and i think you know that i just thank you for your support this has nothing to do with that she also said to her fans, I love you, which to me also further helps feed that parasocial relationship that's being developed that she's kind of trying to cut the bonds of early. So she knowingly or maybe unknowingly continues building that bond with statements like that. This is not me trying to be nitpicky, but I genuinely think she's trying to disengage with this. And then when she kind of doubles down on that and says things like, I love you and da da da, people take that and run with the wind. So a lot of people are concerned with her burning out because unfortunately this is the name of the game. It is, you can't erase it. But maybe one celebrity at a time speaking out can change um, the social ill and the stigma behind discussing it. So I just prefaced this with the Chapel Roan situation. I felt like that was a huge catalyst for this conversation. But let's get to the root of what really is being discussed here. So let's talk about the parasocial. This leads us to the semi-scary word, parasocial relationships or PSRs. A word that's often seen negatively in this context, but let's be very real. Most of us engage in parasocial relationships. We have at some point in our life, if we aren't already. There's just levels to this. There's levels, but it can be a breeding ground, a petri dish for developing unhealthy behaviors. So let's define parasocial relationships. Parasocial interaction, PSI, and a parasocial relationship, PSR, both refer to the unreciprocated connections that people feel with fictional or media personalities. And the term was created in 1956 by psychologists Donald Horton and R. Richard Wall. And this was when televisions became widely available. They noted that TV viewers began to develop the illusion of intimacy with the characters on their screens. And this quote comes directly from their scholarly article where they outline this term for the first time saying, quote, the interaction characteristically is one-sided, non-dialectical, controlled by the performer and susceptible to mutual development. So due to our brains like naturally developing to be social, through the mirror of media, like movies, TV, and music, we are inclined to recognize faces we see consistently and attribute warm feelings, familiar feelings to them. You watch a TV show weekly for 
12 weeks, you become familiar. You watch reality TV show. Doesn't make it right, but it's very easy for the breeding grounds to happen very naturally, honestly. I don't think a lot of people go out and start parasocial relationships trying to be malicious. And actually ThriveWorks shows that 51% of Americans have been in parasocial relationships, even though only 16% admit to it. So there's denial here, guys. Actually, acceptance is the first step. <laughs> like, let's look in the mirror real quick. Deeply affected after the death of a celebrity, parasocial. I'm not saying it's villainous, okay? I think everybody remembers where they were when Michael Jackson died. Ciao. 2009. Remember it, right? Upset when a fictional character or on TV or film has died, parasocial. We're getting into that territory. Knowing intimate details about a celebrity's life and caring about it, Definitely parasocial. And in 2002, psychologist Lynn McCutcheon helped develop what is called the Celebrity Attitude Scale. And he developed a questionnaire that measures the extent on which fans are enamored by their favorite artists, right? We get from like normal to crazy. No, normal, crazy, psychopathic. So basically the scale was into three categories. We have the entertainment social. So this is considered the vast majority of people. The fan that appreciates their favorite celebrity skills and enjoys sharing that with another group of people. Fairly innocent. Then two, you have intense personal. And this happens when people begin internalizing the values of their favorite celebrity and believe genuinely that they are their soulmate. It's getting weird. And then third, we have borderline pathological. We've arrived at crazy town. <laughs> People who would do anything for their favorite celebrity, i.e., for example, illegal activities, stalking, harassment. And actually, this study found that around three to five percent of people with parasocial relationships meet this criteria in celebrity worship. And three to five doesn't seem like a lot, but when you actually look at the scale of some of these fandoms, it's a sizable amount of people. And I would be kind of terrified if I was a megastar. This also ties to a bigger root issue, especially in the age of social media. There is a loneliness epidemic that permeates through society more than ever before. And in 2023, Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy issued a report that found that one out of two American adults are lonely. Mind you, adults, but that's about half of us. Um, COVID-19 ushered in like that isolation that was forced upon us. And then a lot of us have adapted and, and, and have subconsciously and very consciously adapted those habits of staying away from people, being a lot more anxious in public. So we opt to stay inside a lot less third spaces, a lot less social spaces, right? And a lot more communicating only online. So that's where a lot of people find solace online. And where do they find that solace? Creating relationships with their favorite celebrities, creating relationships with their favorite singers. I feel like music gets it so much harder because not only are you connecting with the person, but the music feels so real to people. It's so easily digestible and consumable that people start to conflate very easily the singer to the person, the music they make. So now, yeah, the social and social media don't necessarily mean social, not the type of social interaction that humans really need to survive. So people have turned to media, music, and movies to attach themselves to a figure, to a community to induce and simulate feelings of togetherness. Keyword, simulate. When that is what some people are only getting and it's not being supplemented, not good. Some of y'all are gonna cuss me out in the comments, but to be clear, parasocial relationships aren't inherently bad, okay? They're not inherently demonic and deranged, not inherently. And psychologists have actually studied that there can be some perceived neutral or positive effects that come from parasocial relationships. Again, disclaimer, this is not to encourage you to be like obsessed with celebrities, it's not. A study by Laurent Jarzina says that parasocial interaction should not replace real relationships, but the behavior can supplement them in filling social needs and decreasing loneliness. It was also found that Parasocial relationships can have potential benefits to health. Having a PSR with a person who has contracted an illness or disease may increase your likelihood of engaging in health compliant preventative measures. And that was actually observed in a study by Walter in 2022. Um, it can also lead to a source of enjoyment and entertainment. But this only really works when a fan realizes that this is just for fun and it stays in that space. It should not affect your decision making, your, your well-being, um, your moral compass, and your identity as a person. And it also fosters a sense of community and belonging um, with those who share similar interests, which can possibly lead to real-life friendships. But this can clearly <laughs> get carried away. 
especially when we look at stan culture let's not normalize it too much but when done in moderation there can be quote positive effects but it can become dark very quick and let's talk about it there becomes this feeling of people thinking that they know a celebrity personally they begin to feel like a peer but the catch is and it's not really a catch i feel like this should be very like common sense common knowledge you really don't know these people person to person human to human you don't know them but people who are lonely mixed with those chronically online mixed with people lacking self-identity people can engage in these non-existent one-sided relationships and it can become dark. It can lead to a loss of personal identity or individuality. Um, you can become consumed by a figure who you don't personally know. You conflate the two and make that an obsession, make that in your entire being through your actions. I also think of like celebrity impersonators. Um, it can also become obsessive and compulsive and it can interfere with your day to day functioning. And you see this very clearly on Stan Twitter. Um, not that all Stan accounts are bad. I think it's okay to like support people, but the way that some of you guys will become obsessive, it becomes very scary, honestly, and alarming. It can lead to unrealistic expectations about the said celebrity, creating unfair criticism and subjecting them to ridicule for not living up to expectations. Some Ariana Grande fans, where people are talking about her appearance and like she don't look like she used to and her own fans are like, I miss when she was a bad And I was like, is this about the music or the aesthetics? Like y'all claim y'all love her so much, but now you you are you are your own favorite celebrity's biggest enemy, y'all. Like y'all are crazy. Another danger is that people begin to objectify and further help to commodify a person. But we help further turn people more into products than human, stripping them of humanity, an object for our enjoyment, right? Versus a human being with feelings, real feelings not AI. And when Chapel Roan, she said in a further statement, I want to love my life, be outside, giggle with my friends, go to a movie theater, feel safe and do all of the things that every single person deserves to do, which we do. But because you are turned into this commodity, the Hollywood making machine chews you up and spits you out and people gravitate towards you. Unfortunately, it gets very dark. Doesn't make it right. Um, but I don't know if a world exists at this moment where you can snap your fingers, do a rant like this, and it's just gonna happen. I mean, when we go back to the roots of Hollywood, how they churn out stars, when they finally started to figure out this formula, we can go back to little girls screaming over Elvis. Mom, dad, I love him. Parents hated him. Beatles fans crying, chasing, and fanning out. I've, I, I was about to say, I've never seen anything like it. I was not there, but when you look at those videos, that was the first time they had seen anything to that magnitude. People fainting at the sight of Michael Jackson. The insane fanfare of Bieber fever. The One Direction craze. Have you guys have seen videos of like girls actually violating them? Kissing them unconsensually. Like it was gross. The stuff that Justin Bieber had to deal with. Grown women like touch. Like it, it was disgusting and it was never okay. I think of the insane exposure to ridicule and entitlement that Britney Spears had to face and had to deal with at such a young age. It was never okay, but it became the norm. And a lot of us guys participated in it. Sit and look at yourself in the mirror. A lot of you guys, myself included, have participated in the fandomonium, the borderline obsession and i think this is the delineation a lot of people have experienced these feelings as children we've all been preteens we've all been kids you're very easily susceptible to that as a child think of like being a backstreet boy fan back in the day or being a britney fan and having all her posters all over your room it was fairly innocent right but you 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 tend to slowly kind of grow out of that obsession phase and hopefully it becomes more healthy the gag is that people don't grow out of it, right? And I think at least back then we didn't have social media as prevalent. So it wasn't like the driving force. And I'm concerned there's a lot of kids now who are growing up on the internet. So it becomes this echo, echo chamber. chamber. So I would argue it becomes even a little more dangerous now where it is important that we're checking people and stopping people in their tracks, making people think twice about the obsessive behaviors we develop with our favorite artists and i think that children are easily susceptible to it and while a lot of us did unfortunately participate with the crazy obsession 
um, as children because it can provide comfort and escapism from real life issues and stressors. A lot of them that stem from your adolescence, but going into puberty and and growing into themselves, you're still lacking a sense of self-identity. When we talked about that celebrity attitude scale we discussed earlier, the studies show that this does rise, like you move up the scale, like considerably in preteen, teen, and early adulthood years, right? So like that more obsessive scale, you see that higher from younger children, but that tends to decline through adulthood. Tends to, because clearly some of y'all haven't grown up. But due to strong feelings with parasocial relationships some fans take it as disrespect when an artist will speak up against their actions collectively think about how doja cat became off-putting to some fans with some fans even going as far as saying doja cat hates us like she hates her fans there was i would say a good few months a couple years ago or so maybe last year or something where like she was going off on y'all like and some people were like i'm shutting down my stan account cardi b does it all the time she will rant to her stands and cuss her stands out and people will be like i am deactivating my my cardi b stand page and because let's say like a chaperone right she's not the first to go off on her fans but because she didn't package her message in a pretty little pink bow some people felt deeply offended as if she did something to them Again, the parasocial relationship hit them in the gut. Again, you don't always have to be polite about disrespect. I want you guys to let that marinate, especially my women, okay? But also when your favorite fan or celeb, whatever, whatever is talking, don't, don't do this whole, oh, she needs to shut up, I'm done. No. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. If she's not talking about you, some of you guys are taking it personally. But maybe you're not that person. With the strengthening of mass communication on a global scale, where you can watch a celebrity story and know instantaneously what restaurant they were at, where there's literal fan pages who are like plotting, okay, they're going to be here at this time and go camp out. To people swarming you for pictures, there's definitely more accessibility, which I think makes it even kind of scarier nowadays. And also, celebs can respond back to your comments very easily creating Twitter spaces and channels and group chats, etc., that further facilitate this relationship. So yeah, celebrities, guys, it goes both ways. They can do their own damage in these scenarios, right? Setting the stage for parasocial relationships to develop more easily and be reciprocated. So I'm not gonna name no names. If you guys wanna play a little cute guessing game in the comments, but we have some celebs who egg on their fandoms to stalk, harass, dox people. You are feeding in to their delusions. You are green lighting it. So when they turn on you, don't. Oh my gosh. No, because you have facilitated a negative, nasty environment and you are directly communicating with these fans and not setting boundaries. So they go off the hinges. So then when it turns back in your face, you don't like it. No. But being parasocial and having these relationships is not always a downfall to the celebrity. Many of them feed into it because it gains and sustains their support. Like you have to kind of play the game. How do you think that strong fandoms are built? And I think it's important to note that boundaries exist and they're different for each person. There are some people who come into certain industries, music, movies, who want the life. They want to be snapped by the paparazzi. They want people to know their names. At least they think they do. It comes with the territory. I'm cool with it. But everyone just doesn't have that attitude. I actually saw somebody um, post a video of Sabrina Carpenter doing autographs and talking to a fan. And someone quoted it saying, now this is how you react when someone asks you for a selfie. Take notes, chapel. That's the, the most ideal situation and that makes a lot of people's day. It makes a lot of people's world and it's so nice to do that. But somebody like Sabrina has been in the limelight since she was a child and she's been able to adjust Or she might be somebody who's cool with that. So you can't really compare people. It's apples and oranges a bit from person to person. But I will agree that, you know, people are going to kind of ask for pictures. There are some things that you got to kind of navigate that do exist. And there is a way to be kind of gracious about it. But I remember even like when we talk about this whole fandom parasocial thing, I was watching the Popstar Academy Cat's Eye documentary. Let me know if you guys want a video on that. Um, but when they were in the survival show part of the the show and the girls have to post on social media and gain a fan base, the execs were literally saying like, the fans are going to feel possessive over you. And labels embrace that. They want that. They want people to buy into your every word. They want people to buy into the friendships. They want people to buy into your persona past the music. And it's kind of crucial nowadays for sales. Now, I agree. 
keep your filthy hands to yourself and respect people when they are eating or on the phone or clearly having personal time. And that's a tact that a lot of you guys lack. Um, some guy talked about he was hanging out with Jason Momoa and he did a little story time. I will post it here. I have a mutual friend that about 10 years ago was really good friends with this guy. We would just hang out with Jason and do things. And let me tell you, it was eye-opening how selfish and inconsiderate people were around him. Later that night, we went to a bar and we're just sitting outside the bar eating and drinking and he called his kids to say goodnight. He was just on the phone with his kids saying, I love you, good night. He hadn't seen them in months. And this woman came out and said, poked him on the shoulder while he was on the phone, which is weird, right? You see somebody on the phone, you don't just start interrupting them, whatever. She pokes him on the shoulder and was like, hey, can you take a picture? And he put up his finger and said, just a moment, I'm talking with my kid. She literally started crying, crying. And she went inside and her boyfriend came out and immediately he's like, I don't care how famous you are. You can't speak to her that way. In that moment, I realized being famous is a curse. It's ridiculous how people feel so entitled to your time and your attention. Like that's disgusting to me. Pull up a chair, guys. Story time. I hope you have your blankets, your snacks, your tea. Story time. And just to put into perspective, when I was in New York for a summer, I had just turned 16 actually, um, and I was at a program. I was at the Alvin Ailey School and we were walking down the street, saw Kristen Chenoweth. We all saw her eating in a cafe, like a random cafe. And I kind of knew who she was. I wasn't like super familiar regardless, guys. I told my friends, because I was like, guys, let's go. We got to get a picture with her. We got to get a picture. I said to them, hey, can we all like at least go in there and buy something or get something to drink or like kind of make it seem like we're going in there for a reason? Because I feel like it's kind of rude just to bum rush into a restaurant while she's eating and so we're all like okay bet we go into the um the little restaurant i'm like hey like can i get a coke i thought we all had a plan to not be fucking creeps and weirdos i'm the only one that goes up to the register orders a drink where are they bombarding kristen channel with her food just sitting there and I like grab my drink I pay for my food I walk over and I'm like oh hi you know kind of you know I don't want to be uh, away from the group but I was like we all had a plan this lady is eating I felt so bad she was so lovely such a nice woman but we shouldn't always have to expect celebrities to be so kind another story time Alvin Ailey I was me and my friend we went to the restroom Vanessa Hudgens was rehearsing for a musical at the time and so me and my friend we went into the bathroom we used the bathroom because we had to make it to class. And as we were walking out, we noticed that Vanessa Hudgens walked in. And so we walked past her at the same time. Her friend was also in there as well. And it didn't hit us until we walked out the door. We were like, is that Vanessa, Vanessa Hudgens? Hudgens? Like, what? And so a lot of y'all's first instincts would be, let me go back into the bathroom. I'm not asking for that lady for a picture in a bathroom. That is so freaking rude. So what do we do? We were contemplating. We're like, we got to go to class. We about to be late, whatever. So what we decided, there was a little water fountain outside. We sipped on our water. So when they came out, if she was cool with it, we were like, hi, we really like you. We love your movies. Is it cool if we get a picture? She was so kind. But some of y'all, I, I fear, some of y'all would have been like in the bathroom trying to get a picture. There are certain things that are off limits. I'm talking too much. Am I talking too much? I might be talking too much. My point is though, respect people. They're people at the end of the day. And I've been in scenarios where I could have fanned out and been really weird, but I wanted to keep certain boundaries in place. And mind you guys, I was a teenager and I knew the difference. And of course, there is a delineation that might need to be made, right? Like there could be parts where, yeah, it's giving entitled a bit because there are some parts of the job that might be annoying to you, like taking pictures or giving people hugs and kissing babies. But if facilitated properly, it's not inherently a problem, aka a meet and greet, aka a, a record signing or something like that. If you're a celebrity and you hate that shit, if it's facilitated and you still got a funky attitude, you are giving entitled, okay? Because people spend their hard-earned money. So that's where like you get into a territory where I'm like, okay, you're kind of you're kind of being an ass, you know? I know a girl posted something where she went to Lucky Day's like record signing and he was kind of a jerk um, because she didn't have his newest record to be signed. So today Lucky was doing autographs at Criminal Records and Low Five Points here in Atlanta. Um, so I asked him, could you put my name on it? He's talking about you asking for a lie. You know what this nigga did? He put Get Algorithm on my vinyl. Why the f would you do that? 
you act like I didn't pay for this. I can pay for this. So I did support you. And you can put my name to my asking for a lot. And then I'm I looked at the dude like I'm asking for a lot. He told me something, yeah, thank you. And I looked back at him like you can't put my name though. And he's like, thank you, move along, move along, move along. Like this dude was just shooing me. Yeah. It's just stuff like that where it's facilitated and you're being pissy and irritated and rude to people who paid for something. I don't like that because now that's a part of your job to turn that shit on. But let's leave it here. One of the worst manifestations of parasocial relationships becomes that obsessive fan behavior. And that can lead to media personalities being harmed in real life. Guys, we see stalking and harassment too often. Stalkers that eventually even face jail time, they get granted restraining orders. And it's not fair to say that these artists deserve that because they got good and hit the jackpot with something that they love to do. It becomes less about supporting the actual music and more about the actual person behind the music. And you can say, oh, that's nice. Like, how bad is it that we care about them beyond the art? Like, isn't that a nice thing? But that's where the lines begin to blur. And that's where people start to begin to sadistically think that you are their property or that they own you. And we have to get dark and we have to get serious for a second. There have been musicians who have been killed by their fans. We can talk about Christina Grimmie, who was murdered at her concert by a fan who, once they did some research on him, they found out that he had an unhealthy and unrealistic infatuation with her. Rest in peace to her. Um, actually, my very first dance solo I did was a cover um, that she did, so beautiful voice. John Lennon was shot by a fan. Selena was killed by the president of her fan club. So yeah, they did not deserve that because that's the quote life they chose. I don't give a damn how you guys want to slice it or dice it. They don't deserve that. So please sit with that. Like I need you guys to sit with that. Do's and don'ts do support your faves music by buying it. You can support people by supporting their art guys, which a lot of you guys are doing less of that. A lot of y'all are doing less of that. Um, leave a sweet comment on Instagram. That suffices. Do leave their family alone. Do get a life. Do develop hobbies outside of media consumption. Sit with that. Maybe ask for a picture. If they don't want to, don't get offended. Don't harass someone when they're out eating, in the restroom, on the phone, or clearly having personal time. Don't stalk or dig up personal information. So in conclusion, I think some fans look at artists who have seemingly close relationships with fans and they say, well, so-and-so is nice with her fans. Or, she never says no to a picture, so what's the big deal? Uh, but it's different boundaries for different people. And also fan groups are different across the board. You got some fan groups that are crazier than others, who are more obsessive and others who are a little more chill. It still doesn't mean to me that we shouldn't begin reforming the way that we approach celebrities consistently putting them on pedestals and further creating a gap between us to them from human to human. So I really want you guys to take this as food for thought. I don't want to demonize the parasocial relationship, um, but I just think that we can all kind of look at how we interact with celebrities. So like, comment down below. What do you guys think of um, the conversation? Appreciate you watching today. Comment down a salsa girl emoji um if you made it to the end of this video thank you so 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 much and i will see you guys in my next one bye